City chapter. Yeah. And the emeritus hey, professor of hey, economics at SUNY, Tony Brooks. And a constituent of this fine gentleman right here for 21 years up in Washington Heights. So, I'm uh, from U.S. Labor Against the War. We represent about uh, a dozen different unions and labor federations here in New York City and around the country, over 160 labor federations. And we stand opposed to these wars and to move the money. We all know here, everybody knows, that we need more services and we need more money in New York City. We work here, we live here, we try to provide services for our people here, so we know what's involved. I want to just put in some numbers here to give people an idea of what's involved with this military budget. President Trump has proposed a budget, and Congress is going along with it, that takes 59% of all the discretionary money and puts it into the military. Almost 60%. By comparison, 5% goes for housing, 5% goes for education, 3% goes for transportation, 59% goes for the military. So what is that? That is an outrage. That is an insult to the people of New York City. That is an insult to the people of the world. We spend, as we just heard, more money in our military budget than the next seven countries combined. Five of those are our own allies. So what are we talking about here? It is just an outrage what this country is doing in our name when we are here to put a stop to it. Now, the National Priorities Project has done a calculation for us about what this all means for New York City. So let me just give you a clue. If we would take, not the whole military budget, let's just cut it by 10%. If we cut the military budget by 10%, that's still more than half of the discretionary budget goes to the military. So we aren't crippling our national defense. Let's just take 10%. Here's what we would get in New York City. If we would take the money that New York City pays in income tax to the federal government, and that part of it, it goes to the military budget, and take 10% of that and bring it back, it would be about $2.5 billion a year. Now, what could you do with that money? Well, you could get over 5,000 school teachers. And on top of that, you could get almost 7,000 clean energy jobs. And on top of that, you could get over 9,000 infrastructure jobs. And on top of that, you could get almost 50,000 Head Start slots for our kids. And on top of that, you could get another 40,000 military vets getting VA benefits. All of that, and you still have money left over from what we would give in just 10% of what we send up there. I mean, that's serious, man. This is an outrage to the people of the city of New York. Now, I want to talk about one other aspect of the military budget, and that's what's called the 1033 program. You may not be familiar with it, this is the program that gets the Defense Department to send military equipment to our cities. And uh, they have there's uh, fairs all over this uh, country where police departments can go and pick up uh, military hardware and the federal government will pay for it. New York City has gotten four armored trucks valued at $65,000 each two former artillery vehicles known as mortar carriers valued at more than $200,000 each and the New York NYPD what the hell do they need mortar carriers but we got them here in New York just in case we're being attacked is that security I don't think that's security if the militarized police are in our communities that is not security for those communities and every African American in this city knows that Every Hispanic person in this city knows that. Every white person in this city knows it or should know it. We cannot have the militarization of our police. We cannot have the militarization of our borders. And we cannot have the militarization of our foreign policy. So those things that we buy with all that military hardware, that is not security. They want to tell us, oh, the military is making us secure. Uh-uh. Security is having a job. Security is having a house that you can live in. Security is having a school where you can put your kids and have them learn something. That's security. That's why we say books, not bombs. That's why we say health care, not warfare. Subways, not submarines. 
housing, not Humvees. Or housing, not barracks, if you don't want to give up the alliteration. <laughs> so we're very grateful from U.S. Labor Against the War, from the labor movement in New York City, to Councilman Rodriguez, and to allies in the city council, to take up this question and hold hearings so that the whole city can learn about these things, so that we can have an airing of these facts and get our delegation in Congress, our delegation in the Senate, to understand that here in New York City, we want to move the money. And we want the city council to step up and make that same statement after hearing evidence to this effect. So in that way, I'm happy to represent U.S. Labor Against the War, the New York City chapter, and be with all of you here, our allies, and again to thank Councilmember Rodriguez for his leadership in this, and we are pledging here to work together with everybody as the work continues. And thank you. Thank you. Move the money! 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 Next up is Jimmy.